diameter ED. So up to this point, we know we have some diameter ED of the cycle is produced to C and AC is a tangent to the cycle at B. So now we know we have a tangent and then M is a point on DE such that AM and DE are perpendicular to each other. AM and chord BE intersect at F. So now we know we have a chord. Why am I circling those words? Because uh, they mean so much to us when you're doing uh, Euclidean geometry. So we have 10.1 and then 10.1.1 says prove given reasons that F B D M is a cyclic quadrilateral. So we have F uh, B D M uh, being a quadrilateral, right? And we're supposed to prove that. So uh, let's go to our first keyword, which is a uh, diameter, right? Uh, our diameter is D E, and then how can we deduce that F? B D M is a cyclic quad using the diameter. Um, the diameter, the only thing it's telling us up to so far is that this angle B2 is 90 degrees because uh, an angle that is subtended by a diameter on the circumference is 90, right? Uh, but then if you pay close attention, you will realize that M2 is also 90, right? And then an exterior circle uh, angle of a cyclic quad is equal to interior opposite, right? So we can see that uh, B2 is equal to 90 degrees because it has been subtended uh, by a chord. And then from there, we can see that M2 equals to B2. So uh, why are we saying M2 is equal to B2? Uh, because they are all equals to 90 degrees, right? So from there, we conclude we can conclude that uh, F B D M is a cyclic quad. Why are we saying it's a cyclic quad? Because uh, an exterior angle is being equals to uh, opposite interior. And what did we use to prove that? We used the keywords we have settled. And in solving Euclidean geometry, we're going to stick to nothing else but the given keywords to answer all the questions. So now let's move to 10.1.2 that says, uh, prove given reasons that B3 is equal to F1. So who is B3? Okay, yes, B3, yeah. Um, let me just uh, remove those 90s so that uh, we can have uh, more, more clarity on our diagram. So B3 is situated here. And then uh, this is where F2 is, right? And then, oh, F1, I meant F1. And we are told that uh, B3 is supposed to be equals to F1. So let's go back to our keywords because that's all we do. We stick to nothing else but the keywords. It says uh, the first keyword is diameter like we have settled. We have circled and then the diameter only tells us that B2 is 90. So it cannot do much for us. So let's move forward and use uh, the next keyword, which is tangent. So we are told that uh, the tangent is AC, right? So if AC is a tangent, uh, then B3 is equal to D2, right? Uh, B3 is equal to D2. So up to so far, uh, we can just state that uh, B3 is equal to D2 uh, because of the tan chord. Uh, theorem, right? But then, uh, something to realize, we have to realize that uh, F1 is an exterior, tang uh, exterior angle of a cyclic quad. So it is also equal to D2, right? So we can say that F1 is equal to D2. That is because F1 is an exterior angle of a cyclic quad, right? So let me just write that down of a cyclic uh, quad. And then it is equal to D2 because D2 is an interior opposite. 
So now we can conclude and say that um, F1 equals to B3 because uh, they are all equals to D2, right? And then we are done with proving 10.1.2. And then now we can move ahead to 10.1.3. So 10.13, we have triangle uh, C, D, B, and they say, you know, let's prove that uh, it is similar uh, to triangle C, B, E. And again, we're not going to use anything apart from what we're given. We're going to stick to the keywords to answer all the problems. So now, up to so far, the keywords we have is diameter, tangent, chord. And another thing we know, we just know that um, F, uh, B, D, M is a cyclic quad. So we can just add cyclic quad here, cyclic uh, quad just in case we might forget but then apart from that this is a these are the only properties we are using right so as i've said on the other video i did on uh, euclidean geometry when they name these angles they don't just name them randomly they name they name them relative to the angles that are equal so in triangle c uh, d b angle c will be equals to angle c in triangle c b e the same is true for d and then the same is true for b so let's uh, draw the triangles so that uh, we can have a bit of more clarity right now we have uh, more clarity on our triangles so let's go ahead and start so before you go any further you will realize that angle c um angle c what angle c is equals to angle c on all triangles right so the reason would be common they have a common angle so now we can look for this uh, angle d1 here to be uh, equals to this entire angle if we look at the uh, diameter it, it doesn't tell us much about uh, B2 being related to D1. So we're going to move ahead and look at the tangent. So because AC is a tangent, uh, we've already said that uh, B3 will be equals to D2, right? But then another thing that is true is that B1 in our smaller tangent uh, will be in our smaller triangle will be equal to e in our big triangle right so from here we can see that um b1 is equal to angle e because of the tan chord theorem and then from here we can then conclude that triangle c d b is equal to triangle c b e that is because if two angles in two triangles are equal then the third angle will also be equal because the sum of angles in triangle <coughs> is constant or it is equal to 180 degrees so we have proved that similarity so we have 10.2 uh, 10.2 says if it is further given that cd is equal to 2 so cd is equal to 2 let me just write that down cd is 2 and then de is 6 units so de is 6 units calculate the length of and then 10.2.1 uh, dc or uh, de is equal to 6 and then uh, 10.2.1 says calculate the length of uh, bc so what is bc um bc is this line here is this line here uh, which is uh, the biggest uh, line on the smaller triangle right so in using similarity we can see that bc divided by something will be equals to uh, the biggest side on the biggest triangle right the biggest side is ce which is cd plus de so we're gonna have two 
plus 6 divided by. Now we have to make sure that uh, the other sides which we are dividing with, we know their values so that we can determine BC. So we are given CD and uh, DE. What is CD on our a small triangle cd is our smallest side right so we're gonna put cd there and then the smallest side on our bigger triangle is bc so here we're also gonna have uh, bc but we know what cd is cd is said to be two right so here in place of cd we can have two instead so if we cross multiply we're going to get BC squared equals to 2 multiplied by 8, which is equals to 16, right? So what the square root of 16, we know fully well that the square root of 16 is equals to 4. So the length of BC will then consequently be equals to 4. And then we can move ahead and do 10.2.2, which says, uh, let's determine the length of DB, right? So let's, uh, let me just erase uh, that back in I had done for BC and let us look at DB. DB is our, uh, where am I, why am I erasing it? So DB is our second largest side on our small triangle, right? So we can see DB divided by and then some side is equals to what's the second smallest um side in our big triangle that is be right so let's put be there and then divided by uh, and then we can divide by any two sides uh, that we have and um, the the length is of and will still keep our proportionality right so for our small triangle we know cd right so let's just uh, divide by cd cd is our smallest side so we can say cd and then the smallest side in our triangle uh in our big triangle is cb right so here we can have cb so for db we still just have db because we don't know what that is right and then for be uh, what is be uh, it seems like we also don't know what be is so let's just leave it like that for the moment and then we know that cd is equal to 2 and we know that uh, cb is equal to 4 right so we're gonna have uh, db uh, multiplied by 4 equals to 2 multiplied by uh, be so basically uh, be is equals to 2 multiplied by db but uh, the trick of the question is realizing that as soon as you have this if you use any kind of proportionality then you won't be able to solve for either db and be right because let's say you're dividing 12x by 6x this is not 2x right it is 2 so if you have a one length in the form of another right and then you cannot divide your way into finding the length because uh, the length itself will be cancelled out and you'll only be left with the proportion so we want to find a method which we can either add and subtract because if you have 12x and you're minus by 6x you're gonna have 6x right so you will still have that length there so we want to find a way which we can add or subtract uh, to find the length of of be and db consequently so there's something to realize here we said that um b2 is 90 right so if b2 is 90 that means that triangle b d e is a right angle triangle right so we can say db squared plus b e squared is equals to d e squared but what is uh, d b squared so because right now we don't know what uh, d b squared is we're just gonna have d b squared uh, rightfully so and in place of b e we're gonna put 
2 dB because that's what the proportionality told us, right? So if you are realized, now we're going to be solving for dB. So what is dE? D is 6, so we're going to have 6 squared. So this will become D, uh, what am I writing? DB squared plus 4 DB squared equals to 36. So we're going to have 5 DB squared equals to 36. Now we can divide both sides by 5, right? We're going to get DB squared equals to 36 divided by 5. If you take square roots on both sides, you're going to get DB is equals to square root of 36 is 6, right? But then the square root of 5 is square root 5.